Washington Journal continues. The First Amendment reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. Roy Moore, what does that mean to you? That means that it's a, the first of our freedoms in the Bill of Rights. Uh, or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances being the first, full First Amendment. It's one of the most valuable rights we have in the Constitution, and it was protected from government interference. That's exactly the reason that what has been done in court by forbidding the acknowledgement of God is a violation of the First Amendment itself. The First Amendment was to protect the states from government federal interference. When the federal government acknowledges God in all three branches, it certainly doesn't make sense logically by the First Amendment part of the Bill of Rights to prohibit the states from acknowledging God. So is there a separation of church and state? Absolutely. Separation of church and state is a long historical, legal, and even a biblical doctrine. Separation of church and state means to keep the government out of the affairs of the church. It doesn't mean to forbid the acknowledgement of God. Indeed, the very term separation of church and state acknowledges the sovereign God. It was all the way back to the Bible that God ordained the priest out of the tribe of Levi and the family of Aaron and the kings out of the tribe of Judah, the family of David. There was a separation of jurisdiction between what belonged to God and what belonged to civil government under God's authority. Should a, a representative of the Ten Commandments be allowed in federal office buildings? And should the Ten Commandments be in federal? Yes, should, should a, you know, a stone display? or a, pl a plaque, a display? Well, I think that the Ten Commandments are in many federal office buildings already. Uh, you can go to uh, the, the United States Supreme Court. Above the Chief Justice is a display of the Ten Commandments, Roman numerals 1 through 10. Now, some people will say that's the Bill of Rights, but in 1950, the United States Supreme Court said it was the Ten Commandments. There's simply been a, a dissolution or a, a change over the time uh, from acknowledging the sovereignty of God. And what, whatever happened to the Ten Commandments in the uh, Alabama? Supreme Court. Well, they're presently on a tour. They were just recently taken out of the closet where they were placed nearly a year ago, and they were hidden from view because they had the Ten Commandments on them. But you, you must understand that what was at issue in the case was not the Ten Commandments. It wasn't even a stone monument. It was the acknowledgement of God. I have here the uh, closing arguments and the uh, statement of the judge that tried the case, Myron Thompson. He said the issue is, can the state acknowledge God? And that's the issue all across our country, from the Pledge of Allegiance case in the Ninth Circuit to this case to other cases. Well, if, if, if the, and is the state allowed to acknowledge God? The state is allowed to acknowledge God, indeed. Then why were the Ten Commandments removed? They were uh, wrongfully removed. Uh, the order was against the Tenth Amendment, against the First Amendment, it was against everything that we stand for. It was against the organic law of our country, which is the Declaration of Independence. But to look at it from the other side, what was the argument in favor of removing it? Well, them? their argument simply is that it was religion. Well, God's not religion. The United States Congress in 1954 recognized the distinction between the institution of religion and a belief in the sovereignty of God when they put under God in the pledge. Certainly today, we don't recognize that distinction. Uh, why are you in Washington? Well, I'm in Washington. I spoke to... A, a Young America's Foundation, which is a group of uh, college students that uh, represent conservative values, and I spoke to them last night. And you spoke on the topic of? Of separation, church and state, the First Amendment, the acknowledgement of God in the history of our country. What is the status of your case, or your, what is your status? Right now, I'm, I was, have been removed as Chief Justice of Alabama. We, as late as last Thursday, filed an appeal or a petition for writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court stating that it is completely improper to remove a public official for what he professes to believe about God. Indeed, in 1961 in Maryland, a notary public was allowed to keep his job because he refused to profess a belief in God. They said it was a religious test that could not be applied by the state against this notary public. And today they've removed a chief justice for acknowledging God. And what what hope do you have of being reinstated? Well, I think it's a very important issue that the United States Supreme Court should take up. Uh, whether they take it up or not, it is, is And there if they a, don't take it up, you will not be that reinstated? That will be the end of it, yes. Is, is uh, Chief Justice an elected position in yes, Alabama? It is. It is. 
And how long have you served? I served approximately three years. As you can see, the phone lines are lit up for you. Let's go right to calls. Charleston, South Carolina, you're up first with former Chief Justice Roy Moore. Good morning. Um, Mr. Moore, I wanted to tell you um, how much my family and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, I agree with your opinion of um, separation of church and state. As a matter of fact, because of the inability that we have to freely um, express our religion and our belief in the in God, we are a homeschooling family so that my children can actually get those morals, those values, things like that, that he needs to be a whole rounded person, which he would be denied in the public school system. And that, to me, is more intrusive than him saying God's name in the pledge or singing God Bless America in school like that. And so for his own protection, to help him, we keep him here at home. And like I said, I um, admire you. My family admires you. Um, I had lots of family members go to your rally in Alabama. Um, my grandfather was there. He actually met you. He's um, supporting you. There's people everywhere, far and near to you, that um, appreciate what you're doing and helping all of us to, to stand up together. So I wanted to tell you that, and God bless you today, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. And I appreciate what you're saying, and I, I agree with you 100% that what the government is doing by intruding into education, forbidding the acknowledgement of God, actually teaching evolution and prohibiting the doctrine of creation, then they're, they're destroying the concept upon which this nation was founded. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. When government forbids God, it removes the very concept that rights come from God. Should a, a Koran display or a Torah display be allowed in federal buildings? It would not be an establishment of religion. That's the simple point. It's not a Congress making a law respecting an establishment of religion. And certainly it doesn't represent the history of this country. It doesn't represent what we're founded upon. But it's not prohibited by the First Amendment. The First Amendment prohibits Congress from making a law respecting the establishment of religion. We've simply departed from the meaning of the words in the First Amendment. We've gone by test, and forbidding the acknowledgement of God completely contradicts the First Amendment. Indeed, the very purpose of the First Amendment was to allow the free exercise and the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. To establish, quote unquote, God is nothing more than to recognize the foundational law upon which we were founded. The organic law contained in the United States Code annotated is in the Declaration of Independence, which says this nation was entitled to exist by the laws of nature and of nature's God. And for those that say, but the Constitution doesn't say that, James Madison said the same thing on January 23rd, 1788 in Federalist Number 43, when he said, we're entitled to have a Constitution because of the laws of nature and of nature's God. In fact, I brought that uh, Federalist paper with me right here. Um, and, and there you go. Okay. And you'll see here, he said, the first question can be answered at once by recurring to the absolute necessity of the case, to the great principle of self-preservation, to the transcendent law of nature and of nature's gods, which declares that the safety and happiness of society are the objects at which all political institutions aim and to which all such institutions must be sacrificed. Next call for Chief Justice Roy Moore, Sarasota, Florida. Good morning, Mr. Moore, and thank you for C-SPAN. Thank you. I'd just like to make a comment that I do believe that there should be a separation of church and state. However, I do not agree that the uh, Ten Commandments should be removed from the courthouse steps. It is our right to show that we are a country founded on the belief in God, and I think that should be upheld because it is a part of our Constitution. However, on the flip side, this is a country who welcomes all faiths, all beliefs. The uh, Statue of Liberty just opened the other day, again, welcoming people from all over this world to be a part of our great nation. I do believe that their religion should be adequately displayed, taught, recognized in this country as new citizens. Thank you. Just well, thank more. you, ma'am. And that's not really the flip side. The, 
The United States Supreme Court in 1931 recognized, and you must understand that the reason other faiths can be represented in this country, other faiths can be believed in this country, is because not government, but God gives us that right. In fact, as late as 1931, in the case of U.S. versus McIntosh, in the majority opinion, Justice Sutherland said that, that uh, this, and I'll quote from that case, it says, we are a Christian nation, affording according to one another, the equal right of religious freedom, and acknowledging with reverence the duty of obedience to the will of God. Now, the minority came back and said this, the essence of religion is a belief in a relation to God involving duties superior to those arising from any human relation. One cannot speak of religious liberty with proper appreciation of its essential and historic significance without assuming the existence of a belief in supreme allegiance to the will of God. You see, the United States Supreme Court in 1931, in both the majority and minority opinion, recognized that that freedom comes from God. And that's exactly what our forefathers recognized. Uh, Joseph Story in 1833 in his commentaries on the Constitution regarding the First Amendment said, the rights of conscience are indeed beyond the reach of human power. They are given by God and cannot be encroached upon by any human authority without a criminal disobedience of the precepts of natural as well as a revealed religion. So I agree. Van Buren, Arkansas. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, I, my name is Shiva Kumari, and as far as I'm concerned, you're a living saint and a, a living martyr. Um, I I'm 63 years old, so I remember going to school when Judeo-Christian principles were taught in the schools and in society. And so much that's happening today, all the problems we're having, have to do with the fact that we've taken all this out of the schools and out of society. I mean, the marriage issue, all of the issues that you look about at that are happening in the political campaign, if we had those Judeo-Christian uh, values, look at the Kobe Bryant case. When I was growing up, a proper young lady did not go up to the hotel room or to the apartment of a man, because if you did, essentially you were saying yes to a sexual relationship. Roy Moore. Yes, ma'am. And what you point out is very interesting because it's something that many people have missed. Our morality didn't come from a constitution. Our morality didn't come from a uh, written code uh, just thought up by our forefathers. It came from the Bible. Uh, that it was recognized by our forefathers. And, for example, this marriage issue. We're not having a problem with marriage in this country because of the Constitution. We're having a problem in this country because a uh, body, a Supreme Court of Massachusetts, a uh, uh, majority of that court, directed the legislature to redefine the word marriage. Now, when they do that, they're making law. And we should recognize that the Supreme Court of Massachusetts, indeed any judicial body, does not have the right to make law. That law is recognized in a moral code coming directly from the Bible, and without a recognition of God, we have no morality, whether it be marriage, sodomy, or even the right to control our children. That all comes from a recognition of the sovereignty of God. Prior to serving as Chief Justice in Alabama, uh, Roy Moore was a graduate of West Point and a company commander in Vietnam, also a private practice law lawyer and a circuit judge 1992 until 2000. Right. Are you planning on running again? Well, if I must, I must, yes. And where are the Ten Commandments right now? Right now, the Ten Commandments are on display going around the country on a tour. R do you know where they are? In what city? I don't or? know right now. No. And that's being done by American Veterans for God and Country? Standing for God and Country, that's right. And you also have a website? Yes, it's www.morallaw.org. Why, mor why moral law? Because that's where our morality comes from. A mor moral law comes from a recognition of the Ten Commandments. Indeed, it was interesting. Last night I pointed out that the first thing George Washington, the uh, John Adams, the Senate and the House did after his inaugural address on April 30th of 1789 was go to the uh, St. Paul's Chapel and sit before the Ten Commandments, which are on display there now. There's been no change, and the docent's uh, presentation recognizes that those commandments were there on the day they sat, on the day he was sworn into office. Next call, Mobile, Alabama. You're on the air. Yes, I'm a Catholic, but I believe that all religious monuments, including the Ten Commandments, have no place in a government building whose purpose is to serve all the people, just like a statue of President Bush would not belong in the lobby of my church. 
Yes, ma'am. There's no uh, basis in law for what you just stated. And if what you just stated was your true belief, you should be protesting the federal district court in Montgomery, Alabama, which is, has a statue of the Greek goddess Themis established on its front lawn or its front uh, courtyard. Indeed, the recognition of God by monuments is done throughout uh, Washington, D.C. here. And it's done throughout our country and has been for years just because you feel this way doesn't make it proper. You should recognize that this God that we are founded upon has given the right of all people to worship Him as they choose without government interference. So in that regard, I agree with you that people should have that freedom. Where Are there other courts in the U.S. that have a display of Ten Commandments? Oh, yes. Uh, the United States Supreme Court has... Right. Uh, any, but any other uh, state courts? Oh, yes. Uh, Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. The uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court has a about a 15-foot tall depiction of uh, carving of the Ten Commandments with the words written out. In fact, in my case in Alabama, and, and this should be pointed out, that the judge did not say the Ten Commandments were improper. He said the Ten Commandments may be proper in government buildings, but to acknowledge the Judeo-Christian God violates the First Amendment. Uh, shortly after I was removed, the justices of Alabama put another display of the Ten Commandments in the rotunda. They're there today, written out in text, but they're surrounded by historical documents. The ACLU, Southern Poverty Law Center, and others have agreed to this. Nobody can test this. Well, what makes one monument locked in the closet with the Ten Commandments on it and the other 50 feet away displayed proper. What other kind of uh, historical documents are with? Well, the Magna Carta, the Justinian Code, things like this. But what they're actually saying is that God is historical fact, no longer relevant. They're not acknowledging the sovereignty of God, which is why the other monument was locked in the closet. Next call, Circleville, Ohio, you're on the air. Uh, yes, sir, Judge. Uh I just want to appreciate, I really appreciate you and the job that you're doing on this, and I uh, realize that we have someone out there that's standing up for us, but uh, what, I, what I want to talk about is um, most churches do not realize this because it's, uh, unless it's people that's closely involved in the uh, um, bookkeeping and things of that nature and the laws of the church, but in order for a church to have a... Um, uh, the status where they're tax exempt, there is a form that you have to fill out with the federal government, which is a 5013C. And uh, there's a lot of organizations out there that's using this, and uh, it bothers me that they do it. I can name some of them, but I, you know, like the Rainbow Coalition, NAACP, and, and this has been going on for years. And then there's another thing, the LCAU, which is creating a small minority of people are creating this situation that we're in now. But if you go back and look at the, the history of the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, if you go back and look at the history of the CFR, which is a Council on Foreign Relations, uh, that society right there is actually run by the Illuminati, which is a, uh, a secret organization. Okay, caller, we're going to leave it there. Chief Justice, a lot to work with there. Well, yeah, there's a lot to work with, but I agree with his basic premise that 501c3 is, is, is a method that they're controlling the church with. And indeed, the American Humanist Associations, which believe in no God, get 501c3 tax exemption. But that brings up an interesting point. If that is a religion, according to the United States government, why are they imposing upon the states and the people of this country that we cannot believe in God? We cannot profess an acknowledgment of this sovereign God. It's not logical. Do you think churches should be taxed? No. Absolutely there's, not. There's an argument going on, a little bit of I don't think going. churches should be taxed, but what the reason, the thing that's going on in our country today is they're not being taxed if they abide by certain rules laid down by the government. That's control, and that's improper. Next call, San Diego. You're on with uh, former Chief Justice Roy Moore. Good morning, uh, Good morning. Chief Justice Moore. No disrespect, but I don't know if you've read the Ten Commandments lately, oh, yes, but I would, like, I would like for you to reflect. Uh, to them in your mind, and uh, <laughs> there's no disrespect, but which one I, specifically? 
one of the main things is uh, not putting idols before us. And to me, you know, I'm a Christian, and I love God, and I love Jesus with all my heart, but the fact of the matter is, if you take the Ten Commandments statue out, in San, in San Diego we actually have an issue going on with taking the cross off of Mount Soledad Mountain, and if they take it down, it doesn't matter, because God is still there. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whatsoever. And as far as the uh, religion in the school is concerned, if my daughter was to have a, a teacher that was Buddhist and decided that he, that he or she wanted to place those values on my daughter, I would be offended. So I have to see myself, I have to be empathetic and see myself through those other people's eyes that are Buddhist, that are being taught by Christian teachers, and just leave it as it is, as, you know, no religion in the school. Just Thank to, you. Thank you, caller. Well, two, two responses, madam, is first, because you're offended at something doesn't make it a constitutional violation. Just like when the ACLU goes and sees the Ten Commandments, that doesn't give them a right to have a constitutional violation because they're offended at God. Secondly, you say it doesn't matter if the nation acknowledges God. I indeed think it's very critical. The Ten Commandments represent that morality upon which we're founded. If we're teaching our children immoral concepts and we're Christians, then something is not uh, logical about that. We, we've got to understand what Washington said in as long ago as the farewell address of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. He went on to say, let us with caution indulge the supposition that morality can be maintained without religion. Whatever may be conceded to the influence of refined education on minds of a peculiar structure, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principle. What we're having in our country today is a lapse of national morality and we can't figure it out. And the reason is because we distanced ourselves from God, the very God that Washington was talking about. Uh, we've got one email and one call left. Here's the email. Can you please tell us why schools throughout the nation provide special rooms to pray for Muslim students during Ramadan while Christian children cannot bend their heads to say a prayer at lunch? Why is there no separation of church and state when it comes to Islam? This is from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Is this... Uh, do you agree that this is the case? When you eliminate the acknowledgement of God, all other... Uh, false doctrines will enter in and will be allowed by government when Christianity is not allowed. And I can't explain that. No, I, I can't explain it by saying that it's government interference with the basic institutions upon which we were founded. Should uh, uh, Muslim children be provided with special rooms? If, if Muslim children could be provided with special rooms, so can Christian children. I think that people should be allowed to worship as they, as they feel led to. The acknowledgement of God gives them that right. Uh, should they be provided? That's not for me to say. That's for the, the entity that uh, controls the schools. But I, I don't think that uh, acknowledging uh, Mohammed or Islam is the foundation for this country. We've got to recognize this country was founded upon the Judeo-Christian concept. The recognition that, that Muslims can worship certainly is relevant because they, that God gives the right to people to worship in the way they choose. But they can't uh, uh, alter our basic uh, doctrines in this country. Final call for Chief Justice Moore, Queens, New York. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call. I study in Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm very much familiar with the uh, issue in this country. I'm currently serving here in New York as a minister. The foundations of the United States government was not laid on the principles of, God, of, of acknowledging God. The founding fathers struggled with that, and the when the various plantation system came together to form the government. They had as a structure a Masonic system to organize as a government. So when you talk about the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, 1 to 17, God gave a specific instruction to Moses to appoint Aaron as the minister without separating Moses from Aaron, the priest. In this country today, the desire to unite church and state to bring about morality can never bring what God expected. Caller, what God expected can be a thing. Thank you, caller. Thank you. I'm not sure whether I understand his question, but you're right that God did separate 
the priestly function from the civil leadership, but that recognizes there is a God. And again, in this country, we must recognize the foundation. To say that this country is not founded upon God uh, refutes the very foundation organ uh, organic law of our country, which is the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights among these life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. God-given rights are the foundation of this country. To recognize God is not prohibited. It is mandated in this country, or else we recognize that government gives us its rights. And if government gives rights, it can take them from us. Former Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Roy Moore, thanks for spending a half Thank hour you, with us. Thank you. Last half hour, Michael Copps, an FCC commissioner, talking about media ownership rules. Maureen Dowd was the first to call them 41 and 43. And this Sunday on C-SPAN's Book Notes, the Pulitzer Prize winner and New York Times columnist ask you to visit Bush World. Enter at your own risk. It's funny because when I covered the first Bush administration, I sometimes felt sad that my tr career trajectory and the first Bushes met because as lovely a guy as he was, I felt... You know, I, having specialized in Shakespeare, I wanted, I was hoping for a president who was darker and someone more like Nixon or Johnson and um, complicated. And the first Bush was, you know, a very uncomplicated guy. And that's why this, the Sun's uh, White House has been such a surprise and revelation because it, it completely gave me the darkness and complication and Shakespearean dimensions that had been missing from the first time I covered the first Bush White House. Maureen Dowd, Sunday night at 8.